Good morning, little masters, and welcome to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the Man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast. Now, last series, we took a break from our usual Fandom Fridays to explore some of Tolkien's rich poetry in the Lay of Lathian. Now, once again, despite how much folks enjoy hearing from the other amazing people in the Tolkien community and how much I enjoy doing those interviews, the response was overwhelming. Please keep this going. So, I'm happy to oblige. Now, last time, we concluded Canto IV as Beren called out for Tenuviel, and Luthien knew that her doom had fallen upon her. Today, we begin Canto V as Luthien teaches Beren how to dance, and Dairon grows jealous. He lay upon the leafy mold, his head upon earth's bosom cold, adrift in mingled grief and bliss, enchanted by an elvish kiss, seeing within his darkened eyes a light that danced like silver flies, a starlit face of tenderness crowned by the stars of Elveness, a loveliness that doth not fade, though all in ashes cold be laid. Then, folded in the mists of sleep, he sank into abysses deep, drowned in an overwhelming grief, for parting after meeting brief, a shadow and a fragrance fair lingered and waned and was not there. Forsaken, barren, bare as stone, the daylight found him cold, alone. Where art thou gone? The day is bare, the sunlight dark and cold the air. Tenuvia, where went thy feet? O wayward star, O maiden sweet! O flower of Elfland, all too fair for mortal heart, the woods are bare, the woods are bare, he rose and cried, ere spring was born, the spring hath died. And wandering in path and mind, he groped as one gone sudden blind, who seeks to grasp the hidden light with faltering hands in more than night. Thus began the anguish barren paid for that great doom upon him laid, the deathless love of Luthien, too fair for love of mortal men. And in his doom was Luthien snared, the deathless in his dying shared. And fate them forged a binding chain of living love and mortal pain. Beyond all hope her feet returned at eve, when in the sky there burned the flame of stars, and in her eyes there trembled the starlight of the skies, and from her hair the fragrance fell of elven flowers in elven dell. Thus Luthien, whom no pursuit, no snare, no dart that hunters shoot might hope to win or hold, she came at the sweet calling of her name, and thus in his her slender hand was linked in far Beleriand. In hour enchanted long ago her arms about his neck did go, and gently down she drew to rest his weary head upon her breast. Ah, Luthien, Tenuviel, why wentest thou to darkling dell with shining eyes and dancing pace, the twilight glimmering in thy face? Each day before the end of eve she sought her love, nor would him leave, until the stars were dimmed, and day came glimmering eastward silver-gray. There, trembling, veiled, she would appear, and dance before him, half in fear. There, flitting just before his feet, she gently chide with laughter sweet, Come, dance now, Baron, dance with me, For fain thy dancing I would see. Come, thou must woo with nimbler feet Than those who walk where mountains meet The bitter skies beyond this realm Of marvelous moonlit beech and elm. And there in far Beleriand He learned the touches of her hand. His feet grew swift as unseen airs, his laughter soft and light his cares, his voice like those in Doriath, where paved with flowers are floor and path. The year thus on to summer rolled, from spring to a summer time of gold. Thus fleeting fast their short hour flies, while Dairon watches with fiery eyes, haunting the gloom of tangled trees all day until at night he sees in the fickle moon their moving feet, Two lovers linked in dancing sweet, Two shadows shimmering on the green Where lonely dancing maid had been. Hateful art thou, O land of trees, May fear and silence on thee seize. My flute shall fall from idle hand, And mirth shall leave Beleriand. Music shall perish, and voices fail, And trees stand dumb in dell and dale. It seemed a hush had fallen there Upon the waiting woodland air, and often murmured Thingle's folk, 
In wonder and to their king they spoke, This spell of silence who hath wrought? What web hath Dibron's music caught? It seems the very birds sing low, Murmurless as Godwin doth flow, The leaves scarce whisper on the trees, And soundless beat the wings of bees. This Luthien heard, and there the queen Her sudden glances saw unseen. But Thingol marveled, and he sent for Dairon the piper ere he went and sat upon his mounted seat, his grassy throne by the gray feet of the queen of beeches, Hirolorn, upon whose triple piers were born the mightiest vault of leaf and bough from world's beginning until now. She stood above us Godwin's shore where long slopes fell beside the door, the guarded gates, the portals stark of the thousand echoing caverns dark. There Thingol sat and heard no sound, save far-off footsteps on the ground. No flute, no voice, no song of bird. No choirs of windy leaves there stirred, and Dairon, coming, no word spoke, silent amid the woodland folk. Then Thingol said, O Dairon fair, thou master of all musics rare, enchanted heart and wisdom wild, whose ear nor eye may be beguiled, who all that passes in this land dost ever heed and understand? What omen doth this silence bear? What horn afar upon the air? What summons do the woods await? Mayhap Lord Tauron from his gate and tree-propped halls, the forest god, rides his great stallion golden shod amid the trumpet's tempest loud, amid his green-clad hunters proud, leaving his deer and frith's divine and emerald forests. Some faint sign of his fierce onset may have come upon the western winds and dumb. The woods now listen for a chase." that here once more shall thundering race beneath the trees of Enderath. Would it were so, an age now hath gone by since Nahar trod this earth in days of our peace and ancient mirth. Ere rebel lords of Eldamar, pursuing Morgoth from afar, brought war and ruin to the north, doth Tauron to their aid come forth? But if not he, who comes, or what? And Dairon said, He cometh not. No feet divine shall leave that shore where the outer sea's last surges roar till many things become to pass and many evils wrought. Alas, the guest is here. The woods are still, but wait not for a marvel chill them holds at the strange deeds they see. Though kings he's not, yet queen, maybe, can guess. And maiden doubtless knows whoever now beside her goes. Oh, Dairon. Man. <laughs> Now, the stanza that reads, Thus began the anguish Baron paid, For that great doom upon him laid, The deathless love of Luthien, Too fair for love of mortal men, And in his doom was Luthien snared, The deathless in his dying shared, And fate them forged a binding chain Of living love and mortal pain. That whole stanza now lives in my head rent-free. That is that is everything. That is powerful. It is sorrowful. It is tragic. It is empowering. It is embiggening, you know, in the sense that it leads to, to the, the, the union of elves and men. It is everything. It is the entire legendarium wrapped up in a single stanza. Living love and mortal pain. There's so much emotion here. But then there's Dairon and his jealousy, the sudden silence upon the land of Doriath, and Thingol calling his minstrel to answer for it, to explain it. Quick note, by the way, Tauron is named a couple of times. Thingol mentions him. Now, for those who might not have caught the context, since he mentions the forest god and the horse Nahar, Tauron is a Sindarin name for Orome, because they're not, of course, going to use Quenya. Now, we wrap up this week's reading through the lay as Dairon tells Thingol, it's not Orome, before he drops hints that Melian might know, and Luthien certainly does. That's it for today's First Stage Friday, but come back next time as Dairon jealously names his rival and Luthien introduces her new boyfriend, mom and dad. Let's just say it doesn't go over too well with Thingol. Now, my plan is to get back to Fandom Friday's next series. I love doing those interviews. It's given me the chance to meet so many amazing people in the fandom. So if you would like to join me on the show or you know somebody who does or who should join me, please email barlamin at theprancingponypodcast.com and let us know. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show, get an ad-free RSS feed, a bonus weekly episode, and more. And join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times as we wrap up this week with, well, you'll have to tune in to see, since that also is a mystery. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Follow or subscribe in your podcast apps and follow at Tolkien Times on social media. And finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men. <laughs>